It has begun. The official Mortal Kombat movie trailer has been released. And let me tell you, I have analyzed it frame by frame by frame. I've watched it a thousand times already. And I'm honestly blown away by what I've seen so far. My hype for this movie is unreal. Although I recognize that is a little dangerous because I might end up disappointed. And in this trailer, we see some characters we didn't know were going to be in it. We see fatalities. We see all sorts of little details that are really quick and really easy to miss. It feels like it's going to be a movie that has a personality of its own, but still respects the Mortal Kombat mythology that's been developing for, what, three decades now? I'm going to post a link to the trailer down below in the description. If you haven't seen it already, go ahead and watch it first, then come back here for the breakdown. I would post it right here in this video, but it's very rated R. If I put it within this video, YouTube's going to be YouTube and demonetize it. And keep in mind, there might be spoilers ahead because there's a couple scenes in the trailer that if you look closely, it definitely reveals what happens to certain characters. So just keep that in mind. For those of you that have already watched the trailer, or you're just curious about the movie, let's go ahead and analyze it. Let's break everything down here. It starts off with Sonya giving the backstory of the tournament, and she describes how different cultures around the world reference the Great Tournament. If you're a fan of the games, you know Mortal Kombat tournaments have been going on for generations. This is really cool because when the original movie first came out, the entire purpose of the Mortal Kombat tournament wasn't even really fleshed out yet in the video game universe. It's a series that's changed quite a bit as the story progressed and they fine-tuned all the details. So now we have the advantage of having years of lore that the movie could pull from. As she's explaining it, would you look at that? We get a perfect glimpse of a mural showing the original great Kung Lao defeating the younger Shang Tsung, straight from the video game universe. There's a quick shot also of what looks to be a statue of Shao Kahn. With this movie, there's actually been a lot of misinformation on the internet, a lot of BS rumors. There was one specific rumor that Shang Tsung was going to be the emperor of Outworld and completely replace Shao Kahn. That's not true. And let's go ahead and put that thrust right here because, I mean, look right there. You see Shao Kahn standing there. He looks awesome. He's huge. He's imposing. Now, whether he's going to be an actual character in this specific movie or it's just going to set up his appearance in a sequel, that we don't know yet. I could see them pulling an after credit scene with this one. In seven years before, in what I presume is a flashback, you see Jax looking for a wanted fugitive and everything is frozen. Of course, that means Sub-Zero. And this is definitely one of those wow moments. Jax shoots towards his face, but Sub-Zero freezes his gun as the bullets slowly make their way towards him until they completely freeze solid. And there go Jax's arms. I kind of wish they hadn't spoiled that in the trailer because it's like one of the first things you see, but that's what movie trailers do nowadays. If you want to completely avoid spoilers, you just can't watch them, period. In the video game reboot, universe we know Ermac destroyed his arms in the animated movie it was Goro so having Sub-Zero be the one here it fits makes sense with his powers too Sub-Zero is really gonna be a force to be reckoned with and he's gonna be bad to the core let's remember this is the original Sub-Zero Bihan who was a complete dick he was dedicated to his assassin clan he does things because he's hired to and yes in the games he did save the world at one point however he's the one that put it in danger in the first place and then later in the series he gives into the dark inside of himself and completely embraces being an evil shadow monster. He is bad to the core. He is not the good guy Sub-Zero that his younger brother becomes later in the series. Remember, that's two Sub-Zeros. This is the bad one. He's the one we're getting here. I think he's gonna have some great fight scenes too. You see him fighting Scorpion in the end. If you look closely, he slices Scorpion then immediately freezes his blood, turns the blood into a dagger right away creates an ice wall, then throws him through it. These are the kind of fights I want to see. Speaking of Scorpion, we do see a glimpse of his clan being decimated as he goes on the attack. And of course, his spirit of vengeance form with glowing eyes. And I love that they gave him the design with the hood and the samurai armor. It looks great. I've always preferred that hooded look. It helps kind of distinguish him from Sub-Zero's look. He's likely going to be the wild card that's present for his own purposes. And let me address two areas of concern I heard from viewers already based on this trailer. We already know there's this original character called Cole Young that's a washed up MMA fighter. It seems he's replacing Johnny Cage's role. And I say seems like it. But this trailer made me buy more into the theory that he is essentially Johnny Cage in this movie. Possibly literally. The name Cage being a stage name later, we'll see if this is the case, but it would make perfect sense actually. I mean, MMA fighter, stage name, Cage. I feel like this was done purposely. If they did this, I would be quite alright with it, seeing as Johnny Cage's original character's name was John Carlton. Johnny Cage was always a stage name. Cole Young is the character that the audience get the story told through, basically. He's surrounded by all these other 
other iconic characters that are familiar to us. From the trailer, it looks like everyone's gonna get some decent screen time too, so it doesn't look like Cole is gonna take over the entire movie. And that's something that's challenging when you're doing a movie based on a fighting game with tons of characters. You really need to give each character some time to develop them. And Cole has this birthmark that identifies him as a chosen one. Some people have interpreted that as he's the chosen one, which is not correct. All the Earth combatants have that birthmark. They're basically all chosen ones. That identifies them as having an invitation to the tournament, basically. So he's just one of the combatants. And another area of concern I've heard is that it seems Kano's a good guy. You see him in one shot with the other characters. Keep in mind, this goes right in line with the original game. Originally, Kano did fight with Earthrealm. He wasn't a good guy. He was still a criminal. He was was still an opportunist, but he was still recruited by Raiden to fight. I think that's going to make for some great interactions between Kano, Jax, and Sonya since they're forced to work together. And you remember Kano and Sonya kidnapped in the background of Shao Kahn's arena in Mortal Kombat 2? Yeah, that's because Kano and Sonya were captured while working together. This is actually video game accurate, so that's not an issue here. That's always how Kano started in the series. I'd also like to point out that we get our first hint at Katana. Look to the left there and you'll see her fans right there just like the video games. Talking about Katana, we can't forget about Melina. We only got a couple quick shots of her with the monster mouth, and it looks like Sonya blasts her away real quick with her wrist blasters from the game. I think she might have blown a hole through her, but it's kind of hard to tell because it's really quick. Shang Tsung looks awesome, and based on the things he says, it looks like he's gonna secretly be sending assassins after Earthrealm fighters in order to cheat, as Shang Tsung does. Some evidence for that here when you see Sub-Zero and Melina behind him, essentially being his henchmen. A plot point taken directly from Mortal Kombat 9 where he does hire the Lin Kuei to do the same thing. They do what they get paid to do. Kano doesn't have a completely metallic Terminator face, but he does still have that cybernetic eye laser, and this could be some editing magic, but in a quick shot, it looks like Kung Lao is deflecting a laser blast from Kano's eye. So at some point, they're going to come to blows. Whether that means Kano betrays them, or maybe they're training, I don't know. But there's clearly going to be some tension there between them. Now let's take a look at some really quick moments that are filled with some information and are really easy to miss. There's a real quick scene where Jax is fighting someone. Then this someone is likely about to get their head smashed in. We know some characters are going to have to die. And it's going to have to be characters from the video game universe that aren't necessarily impactful to the overall story. Mortal Kombat's filled with examples. And what better character to kill off than Rico? I'll go out on a limb and say that this is Rico. Two things make me think that. Look closely at the armor on his arms. And now look at the armor on Rico's shoulders in the game. There's definitely some similarity there. And also, look at that haircut. He's got the sides of his head shaved with the top still there. Look at Rico's haircut, Mortal Kombat Armageddon. It's extremely similar. I think that's him. And speaking of fatality, there are two in this trailer that are also easy to miss. In the scene where Liu Kang looks oddly close to Ryu from Street Fighter, I was wondering who he was fighting, and I looked through each frame until I figured it out. It's been confirmed that Cabal is appearing in the movie. And it looks like this guy's wearing a mask, and check out those hook blades. Undeniable. This is Cabal. And recognize this fatality. Liu Kang hits the ground, creates a dragon out of fire, about to chomp down on its prey. Cabal is gonna get gobbled up by the dragon. Definitely a throwback to his classic fatality, where a dragon bites down on the opponent. And we see Kano thrust his arm into a chest and rip a heart out. His classic heart rip fatality. Kano wins. You fucking beauty. If you look closely enough, he's ripping the heart out of Reptile. And they went with the more dinosaur look that he had around the time of Deception. I actually really like that. And I think there's one more scene where we see Reptile. There's a scene where Sonya, at least I think it's her, she's in a room by herself, and you slowly see someone becoming visible. We know that's a Reptile move. He can go from being invisible to visible. And it doesn't quite look human. That's probably Reptile there. And I almost forgot to mention Goro too. There he is. It's Goro. Looks like he's completely CG this time around but he does look badass. And that is the Mortal Kombat trailer. Let me know your thoughts down below. Did you catch anything in the trailer that I missed? Let me know. It releases October 16th on HBO Max and in theaters. I, for one, will be watching this on the big screen with awesome surround sound, a big-ass popcorn and soda. Start the conversation below. I'll catch you guys later. And if you'd like to support my work, I invite you to become a patron. There's multiple levels of support available. Or for an option right here on YouTube, you can become a channel member and gain access to exclusive badges and emojis and exclusive polls. Every dollar helps keep the wheels turning, and I'd like to thank my current patrons and channel members for their continued support. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and hit the like button, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications. And make sure you follow me on social media so you never miss a thing.